Today I'm in Uxbridge in Middlesex to meet vet Daniel Doherty who treats all sorts of animals, big and small, but he really has become a greyhound specialist with a massive reputation amongst owners and trainers and he really does work 24-7. Well, Daniel, thank you so much for having us here today. I know you're an incredibly busy man, but uh, I'm interested to know, you obviously treat all dogs and all pets here, but how did greyhounds kind of become your speciality? I started working in greyhound kennels whilst I was at the Royal Veterinary College and um, started working for Gary Baggs originally, Walter Ginzel before that, and just uh, giving me an insight into the greyhound industry. Um, yeah, we did five years there with Gary Baggs and uh, he was very successful uh, at around that time. and. Uh, you know, it was amazing to see some of the open race dogs we had in the kennels. At that, that stage, that got me into it. So naturally, this surgery has progressed. That now trainers travel from all over the country yes. to, to come and see you. Why are you so unique? Do you think? I mean, there's very few people that um, have a specific interest in racing dogs, and they're they're, they're typical. They're, they're the injuries that they will get, and obviously, um, identifying those and then operating on those is important to those guys. So they will travel, yeah, far and wide to to to, to have those injuries treated. Do you enjoy treating greyhounds? Yeah, they're probably the best patients you can get. Uh, they're very, very easy to manage. Um, and I think ultimately you can see the results when you manage them correctly because we have an ultimate uh, barometer of their performance is the time on the track. We can see what we can create by putting them back out on the track again, see how well it works. And so this gives us a very good, you know, you, 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 you operate or you work on the dog and then you see the reaction on the track. And it's, uh, it's the ultimate test. We've seen today, for example, there's no reaction to needles. There's no reactions to being manhandled and pulled about a lot. No, greyhounds, if you're confident with them and, and work with them and understand them, they're, they're, they're very, very well-behaved dogs, yeah. Well, Jordan Petford is the manager and uh, a trainee veterinary nurse here. What is it like working at 24-7 Vet? Uh, it's really, really enjoyable. Um, we get a lot, a lot of greyhounds in, uh, get to meet a lot of people, learn a lot of new things. Really busy job, love it. And someone's here the whole time looking after the dogs that are obviously st staying the night and in your care. Yeah, we have um, Daniel, we have a, another vet that lives on the premises. Uh, we have Daniel in pretty much all the time. <laughs> He's never not here. Um, and then obviously everywhere is camera as well. So, and What are these greyhounds particularly like to work with? Uh, they are one of my favourite impatience to keep. Uh, you never get many problems off of the greyhounds. They're really quiet, they're really affectionate, they're very well behaved. Um, they're really, really good animals to look after. So you have so many greyhounds coming through this surgery. But tell us about your pet dog. Hercules is a Pomeranian, a two kilo Pomeranian that I have. And uh, he's a security dog here. He just protects everything, makes sure everybody's in order. Um, he's fearless completely. But uh, I had to uh, take him on from a client. Originally he was gonna get put to sleep. So um, we, we took this little dog on when he was very small. He's probably the smallest dog I've ever seen. He looks quite hairy and, and big, but then if you clip the hair off him, he, he suddenly becomes tiny. But everybody's petrified of him, but he never misbehaves with me. Do you want to see the greyhound? He likes greyhounds. He doesn't even bother with them. Just check to see if it's in season. Mm. He walks on top of them, has a look at them sometimes. He marches around the place like he owns it. How yes. do the greyhounds react to him? Uh, first of all, they look at him and wonder if he's a dog, and, but he's very assertive and uh, very quickly they understand he's a dog and they actually walk around with him perfectly well. <laughs> now you treat, of course, racing and retired greyhounds here. What are the most common problems you see with racing greyhounds, first of all? Uh, performance loss, you know, and, and picking up, identifying what's causing the problem. Um, right the way through to you know, the surgical interference with them, tarsal fractures commonly. You see probably five, six of those a week uh, for surgery here. So, um, and then all the other soft tissue injuries that the greyhounds get. And with retired greyhounds? Retired greyhounds, I mean, they're, they're pretty unique. They're, they're probably as different from a, a dog is as a dog is from a cat, to be honest. So their they're, they're parameters, the blood parameters are entirely different in, in, in greyhounds compared to normal dogs. So obviously you have to understand that in dealing with the retired greyhounds. Um, they're, they're very commonly coming in here with musculoskeletal injuries, injuries from running around the park. People don't they think the track is unsafe, but they want to see how unsafe the park is. Um, uh, greyhound running around your local park is an awful lot more dangerous than running around most of these race circuits. Um, and we see a lot of injuries from them being let off a lead. Um, greyhounds that, that you know, are just enthusiastically chasing anything and everything, they don't realise they have no brakes. Um, so they have to choose the ground correctly to let these dogs go. And then we see perhaps a lot of coins. 
you know, that's another area where we've got a special treatment here that um, corrects those for people. And so they'll, they'll come considerable distances just for that. And again, this is a treatment that you pioneers? Uh, yes, over some number of years we've worked out how to get rid of most of those coins on these older greyhounds. It's much more common in the uh, retired dog compared to the to the uh, race dogs, uh, just because of the environments that they're walking in. I mean, the, the, the retired dog is often walking across glassy surfaces, gritty surfaces. The racing dogs are perhaps in a much more protected environment and on the track and not coming across sharp objects that puncture the feet and trigger the coin in the first instance. One of the most common emails we get into Racing Post Greyhound TV that you've treated is the hock injury, which I think it's fair to say has become a bit of a speciality to you, whether it involves screws or pins or whatever it takes. How has that developed over the years for you, to the point that you pretty much say that no hock injury is unfixable, don't you? Uh, that's right. I mean, uh, it, it, some of the injuries, of course, we can put back for racing, but then it's, it's important to recognise at the beginning which ones are not, you know, race, you know I'm not going to race again and be realistic with owners and trainers at that time. Um, just having done tens of thousands of them, eventually you get pretty uh, quick at working out what's going to race again and what's not going to race. One of the bigger names you treated recently was Eden the Kit. Tell us about his injury. Yeah, he's had a retirement injury and uh, very, very unfortunate because I, um, perhaps the dog didn't do as much as he could have done in his life and, you know, just a little bit unlucky, that dog. I mean, perhaps he could have won a derby. Uh, this dog, um, the Blitz derby, I think he could have had. But, you know, it's a shame. It's just greyhound racing for you. And you see a dog of that mark that didn't quite, you know, so close, so close, so many times and you think, well... And now he's definitely retired. I can tell that you've become a fan of some of these greyhounds, though. Yeah, I think uh, one of my favourites would have been perhaps Droopy's Ward or Hold'em Spy. I don't know, probably the top two that I remember. Spy particularly, because I thought he was, he'd turn his head at any point on the track. He was amazing, amazing little machine. But yeah, of course, you see them all racing on TV. The, 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 the screenshots that we get now, the video, internet video of these races, of course we're watching this. You have an additional facility here that's well used. Uh, it's a water treadmill. Um, it's used to, to, to mimic sort of walking action, but under the resistance of water. Yeah, it's very, very effective for uh, rehabilitation of a lot of these injuries. But if you actually see the action of a dog's legs, what he's doing is high lifting. And that's incredibly hard work what our dog's doing now at the moment. So they're fantastic for uh, rehabilitation, getting fitness levels up, and in particular, um, perhaps increasing stamina levels on greyhounds. Um, it's an injury-free environment. You can work the dog very, very hard. Basically, you can give the dog a race in one of those units. You can exhaust that dog, but you will not injure it. The practice is called 24-7 Vet, and it literally is, isn't it? That's right, yeah. Nine years I've done day and night, 24 hours a day. We often get emails into the program where trainers, greyhounds have suffered a, a broken hook or whatever, and they're on their way to you late at night. Would you literally work all through the night? Yeah, some nights. Yeah. Some days I work the entire night and carry on the next day. Do you have a, a social life, a life outside of, of this? Um, no, but it'll be a good one whenever I finish doing it. That's a good girl. You ready? Come on in. You gonna walk? So what have you done to my leg? Come on then, in you go. Now you really are the man in the know, behind the scenes. So uh, the big question is, what's going to win this year's dog? <laughs> I knew you'd ask me that. <laughs> Maybe that blue bad. <laughs> you like him, don't you? Yeah, very, very nice machine. Yeah, stands out. 